And now let's finally get started with object-oriented programming. By now you should know a whole lot of programming techniques, basic C++, and you should be able to make a whole bunch of your own little stuff just for fun, and more importantly, for practice. I have to admit that uh, I don't enjoy so much coming up with project ideas for the website, the forum website that I put up, as much as I enjoy uh, making these videos, though the truth is that the most important thing about learning C++ is to practice it out and test your skills and it's really useless learning C++ more and more if you're not actually opening up your compiler and coding stuff and trying it all out. Maybe one of you watchers can think up some interesting project ideas, pieces of code to debug and more practicing code stuff for all of our viewers to try out. Otherwise I think everyone should be able to come up with their own little ideas of little programs to make I think it shouldn't be too hard for anyone to right now go ahead and create a, uh, I don't know, a little like combat Dungeons and Dragons type of game where you have your little, your little character that has like experience, strength, health, stuff like that, and you have to battle against different monsters and you gain experience points and stuff like that. Um, you should no problem be able to create a little tic-tac-toe game hangman who knows if you think about it good enough you can even maybe make up your own little battleship game uh, all just using the text interface of the console program we've been using all this time now here's the thing if you're actually gonna sit down and try to start doing those things now you're probably going to be ending up with uh, like a pile of 50 different integer variables 50 different functions that each do different stuff and they're all going to they're all going to be like piled up one after the other with different names and uh, you're going to somehow have to try and keep track of all of them what each one does what each one's name is and what each one is meant to be doing and what variable is supposed to be holding what number etc 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 and that's what programmers have been thinking about when they're trying to come up with a solution of object oriented programming when you think about huge programs like Microsoft Windows or some uh, 3D first-person shooter game like Quake or something, things can get really seriously out of hand when you have to track, like, who knows, 10,000 different integers, thousands and thousands of functions, characters, floats. It's just, it gets out of hand. So programmers have been starting to think that it would be cool if you could make associations to uh, basically associate things that belong with each other things that have what to do with each other to wrap them up together in some sort of package. If you have like a Dungeons and Dragons game where you have a integer health which holds the variable the number of how much health your character has and then maybe you have also experience and strength and a whole bunch of other integers and then maybe you make a function attack which will attack an enemy uh, and attacking an enemy has to do with how much experience you have, because as much experience as you may have, that's probably how hard you're going to hit him, and especially how strong you are, you are, and stuff like that. So as you see, there's some sort of connection between the attack function and these two variables, and even these two variab these three variables by themselves have some sort of connection one with each other. So instead of having to lose this function amongst thousands of other functions, and instead of having to lose these variables amongst thousands, maybe tens of thousands of different other variables, programmers thought it would be cool if we could somehow package things together conceptually how things logically belong with each other. So it should be possible somehow to package together all of this stuff into one package and give that package some sort of name, like let's say character, then we know that anything that has what to do with the character, like the character's health or experience or strength, or the character's ability to attack, or stuff like that, we know that we don't have to go and look for this function amongst thousands and tens and thousands of other functions and variables. We know that it's all stored safely and neatly inside of the package called character. That would be a pretty neat feature to be able to have in programming languages, and that's what 
uh, programmers thought. There are many more reasons and advantages of being able to package together a whole bunch of variables and functions and we'll go through them as soon as they become relevant. For now let's just get into the C++ functionality known as classes. A class is pretty much exactly what I explained before creating some sort of package which will bunch together a whole bunch of variables and functions which all for some reason belong together because they somehow log logically uh, just that they belong together. Here for example is another advantage of this type of programming. Different projects and, and problems which uh, programmers try to solve by making some sort of program can be very very complicated. Uh, creating a game for example, a three, 3D first person shooter or something can be very complicated. I'm sorry, it is very, very complicated. It can get pretty confusing if you're trying to decide exactly how to go about making your three-dimensional first-person shooter game. How many variables, how many integers do you need, what types of functions do you need, and stuff like that. So here's where classes come to save the day, because the easiest way for anyone to think about some sort of idea is to think about how it is in the, in the real world. In the real in the real world, for example, of a first-person shooter type of game, we know that there is something called a person, and there is something called a gun, and there are bullets, and there is speed, and there is health, there are medical kits. That's a whole bunch of real objects that we know of, and we could think about clearer in the real world. So one easy way of going about making your shooter game, for example, is to think about it as real objects. We are going to create something called a person. Okay, what does a person have? Well, he has a amount of health, so that has to be an integer, which is going to be called health. Then we have that a person has a possibility of running, so we're going to make a function which will do the action of running. Then we know that we have something called a gun, or more generally a weapon. And we know that a weapon has an amount of bullets and it has the action of actually shooting. So it's so much easier, easier to come up with the solution of our project that we're trying to program if we could actually think of the stuff in our program idea as actual objects and then put that in C++ code. It's so much easier to be dealing with an object called a person that has health and that has the ability to run than to be dealing with just a bunch of variables and a bunch of functions. Just for the heck of making things clearer and easier, we can think of it like we have an actual person in our C++ code. We don't have to think about it as little fragments of variables and functions. So let's see a little general preview of what creating a class looks like. You type the keyword class. Of course, you are typing this outside of the main function because this doesn't really do anything other than declare what your class is going to be. Just like when you create a function, you do it outside of the main function because you're just declaring what a function is and what the function does. Over here also we're typing it outside of the main function because this is a declaration. Let's call our class Ogre. Now we have an opening brace, a closing brace, and a semicolon. Do not forget the semicolon at the end of the closing brace. And that's it. In this class right now you can give it whatever variables and functions you'd like an ogre to have. So you might think of it as an ogre having, first of all, its health and its strength and and then probably a function which has the ability to attack. There we have it, a good little neat package of stuff which logically belong to each other all gathered together in this class which we call ogre. As we're going to learn, this isn't just a package of functionality all bunched together. This is actually a type of a variable, so to speak, that you can create. You're probably not going to have only one single ogre in your game. You might even have a hundred of them, each one having its own health and strength. So you won't be using everything out of the same package for all hundred of them. You're going to create a hundred separate of these packages. As we're going to learn in the next video, just like you can create an integer x, you can now create a ogre called t. Just like integer is a type of variable, 
ogre is pretty much like a type of variable of which you can create as many of that variable as you'd like.